Hi, this is Ian Wright, and this is another podcast on gastroesophageal reflux disorder, GERD, because I see so much of it, and I want to talk about it a little bit more, because I'm literally spending a lot of my days, or some of my days, every day when I'm in practice, um, treating babies with reflux, and it's increasing, um, and some of the cases are tricky, and some of them are much easier to get to deal with, and we need to talk about it because it's so it's so relevant now. It's so it's it's increased, I think, greatly, and I just want to think about why. Why is this happening? First of all, let's talk about reflux. I mean, there are two forms of reflux as far as I'm concerned. There's an active reflux where babies positing, throwing up, being sick. They tend to be happier because there is, they're actually getting rid of any acid um, and they tend to happily bring up their feed. That's not so much, although that's the, there is a case and they're very important to treat as well. But actually the ones that are the real trouble are the ones who have silent reflux, slightly harder to diagnose and symptomatically usually much worse so let's talk about the symptoms when you have like a silent reflux situation. The first thing, and it's something that's very, very interesting, is these babies are constantly moving. They don't stop. It's like they're hyperactive. They're con- Even when they're sleeping, they don't stop moving. Um, this is not normal. And I say this to folks, this is not, they're not, usually, they don't normally move constantly like this. I think this movement is because they're in a, a constant low-level pain. And I think they're just trying to cope with it. And it's become their normal because they've had this early on from day one and it's, incre- and it's increasing. Obviously, the second symptom here is spitting up, vomiting, difficulty feeding, very difficulty feeding. What they tend to do is start refusing the bottle after one or two ounces. And then they get very irritable. They cry immediately after the feed. They tend to arch backwards. They can pull forwards, but they tend to arch backwards away from it, trying to open out their diaphragm. They tend to be cough and have hiccups. They can have tendency to chest infections. This is actually to do with the reflux. The reflux is coming back and and they're aspirating it. And they can be prone to repeated pneumonias in bad cases of it. They tend to be choking. They tend to have difficulty sleeping. They tend to, they can have poor weight gain. They can be worse lying down. They tend to be better if they're, if they're elevated when they're lying down at 45 degrees or if they're lying face down. A lot of them just in the daytime only want to be held. They want to be sitting up. They want to be held. You, that your hands over their tummies facing away or your chest on their tummies to keep it slightly warm. Um, But lying down is a disaster, so they tend not to like being in their their car seats as well because they're crunched up. The thing with reflux is it can be at birth, but often it starts at around a couple of months old, and then it progresses, it worsens, and it can actually, it can still go on until they're two, even when they have solids. And what can also happen is they can have that can after two it can go away a little bit, but they tend to go on at seven. I see them again, six seven years old, and they get tendency to tummy aches and bad tummies, like what's considered like a nervy tummy. But I think it's a similar cause. There's a similar dysfunction locally in the tummy. So we need to resolve these. The different the differential diagnosis is one of colic, a classic colic, which is something different. Unfortunately, a lot of babies have colic and reflux, which makes them doubly in trouble. Colic tends to start at about three, three and a half weeks old um, and goes on, unless it's bad, to about three, four months. Tends to go away more around three months. Usually worse in the evening, six to 10, 11 at night. They tend to draw their feet up. It tends to be about an hour, hour and a half after the feed. So it's a different character. They can be just as irritable, though, but it doesn't tend to be within or during the feed. Um, So there's a slightly different character, a slightly different mechanism. Colic is to do with the upper gastrointestinal 
tract and a, a, a low transience or movement of the of the um, the milk as it passes down. There can be allergies involved, but it's it tends to be the nerve supply that's affected to the to the upper the small intestine. Um, whereas reflux um, is a weakness of the gastroesophageal valve, which means it part that the, the um, acid and some of the fluids from the from the stomach can come back up into the esophagus and complications of it is can be esophagitis you can actually get inflammation because of the acidity in the esophagus and when it, they get to esophagitis is actually incredibly painful they have a very great difficulty actually in being calm at all so why do so many children have this this is the question nobody knows is the truth why is it um it is often connected to tongue tie, which has exponentially increased over the last 10 years, as has reflux. Not all refluxes have tongue tie, but a large, no, possibly 50 at least percent of them in my experience would have tongue tie as well. Now, there is something to do with the, possibly to do with the genetics that, that could be having an effect meaning that I think 25% of mothers have a genetic predisposition to not absorb folic acid, so the folic acid isn't getting through so much. And there is thought linking up these kind of development of midline, which is a genetic kind of growth development of the way the tongue is attached or actually unattaches itself in the early stages of, of development and how that can possibly affect the mechanics of this other midline structure, which is this um, gastroesophageal valve. Don't know. Um, mechanically, the nerves, the, the, the valve, the gastroesophageal valve has two elements to it. it so one of them is there is a, a nerve control from part of the nervous system called the vagus which can be compromised in the upper neck but the other one is the other part of the of this valve is to, is made up of fibers of the diaphragm which is the big muscle of breathing in our center and that can get a bit twisted in birth either way we need to strengthen it whatever the cause of this weakness in this valve our job as osteopaths is to try and strengthen it up to support release the diaphragm, get as much nerve supply restored as it can. Who knows why, but let, we need to do that. And actually, you know, this actually, you know, this, the bottom of the esophagus needs to heal and the valve needs to get working. If you don't actually strengthen the, the valve, the symptoms can go on and on, on and on. And really it can, you know, even until they're two plus. Um, medication. Um, you can get proton pump inhibitors or H2 receptor antagonists or antacids. All of these medications stop the acid, um, but in different ways, but they don't actually heal the valve. So in the end, we have to try, if we can, to heal the valve. You know, otherwise, you have these complications of esophagitis, tendency to pneumonia. But actually, one of the one of the biggest complications is exhausted and very stressed out parents because these babies can be inconsolable. And I, I treat quite a lot of very bad, very severe cases, which are actually very slow to improve, frankly. And I treat them. You know, we put we we bring them into the Daisy Clinic because they they need repeated treatments. Those are the very bad cases. Some of the the slightly easier cases are more responsive. Thank goodness. But some are very, very hard to treat and they need a multidisciplinary response to them, you know, as in they need the meds, they need um, the management. A lot of parents are very good at managing these symptoms. Basically, they, 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 you know, they hold their children all day. They don't let them lie down until they're exhausted and sleep. You know, they, you feed very slowly so you don't overwhelm the system. So they, you only give them a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time and allow them time to, to adjust. Um, it takes a lot of management. It's full time job. It's you know for 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 these parents, and parents tend to be exhausted by it. But in the end, it 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 is a difficult and increasing subject, and and us osteopaths have to do whatever we can as part of a team that helps that that situation. Anyway, that's an introduction. Um, any questions? Uh, please contact me.